I find it completely amazing that the simplest dishes are often the most difficult. And I think it's probably because there's not loads of flavours and ingredients to hide behind, which is exactly what happens when you're trying to make the perfect simple steak, which is what we're going to do today. I'm showing you how to prepare a simple steak with two side sauces, a buttery one and a herby one. The ingredients you'll need are a good piece of sirloin, and to prepare the steak, you'll need olive oil, Worcester sauce, and butter. Then for the butter sauce, curry powder, chili flakes, ground cumin, and fresh herbs. And for the herby one, capers, parsley, anchovies, and lemon. Even the simplest steak benefits from a little bit of something extra. Now, it's not strictly necessary, but I do think a flavored butter or a wonderful fragrant oil goes kind of a long way. I'm just gonna pop the pan on, because what we're gonna do is make a Masala butter, so slightly, slightly curried, big on flavour, but really there are no rules, it's kind of what you enjoy. Liberal amount of oil, I've got some garlic, you don't have to go too over the top on the garlic, just while the oil's heating up. I'm just going to put some ginger in here, I'm going to fry it all together. Now the ginger is really up to you, so a small knob of ginger should be fine, and this is really just to follow the sort of slightly, slightly Indian-esque vibe going on with the masala or the curry powder. So I've got quite a liberal amount. And I'm just going to toss all of this into the oil. Perfect. Let's just get that going. Once it's just started to slightly colour, I'm going to add our spices. Now, I'm going to use some cumin, and then I've got some curry powder. This is quite a um, an aromatic curry powder. Now don't just accept any old curry powder because that's not really how it works. You know, people spend days, months, weeks and years perfecting the perfect blend, the perfect sort of masala blend. So, you know, afford it this respect and search for one that you really love. It'll change your life, really. A little bit of chili. Masala butter goes a long way to making people's hearts happy. Right, a little bit of salt a grind or two of pepper, and that's pretty much it. So just really saute it gently until everything is soft and lovely, and basically you've cooked those volatile spices so that they really are aromatic and delicious. So to turn that off, get the lemon, perfect. Get your blender, very handy things these little blenders, I must say. Oh, it smells beautiful. Perfect, there's your onion mixture. I want to add half a lemon, I think that's probably going to be sufficient. Now it is a butter, so you're going to need, well, quite a lot of butter really. So about half of this really, just chop it up for, well, I don't know, just make the machine have an easier time of it. And then just really blend away. Ooh. Now, obviously, if you want to make sort of rolled butter shapes, you're going to let your onion cool down completely before you add the butter mixture. Right, a bit more lemon, I think. Might not be a bad idea. And then I'm going to add some coriander. If you don't like the coriander idea, leave it out. And we're away. That is perfect. Let's grab a little bowl. Occupational hazard. I always do that at the bottom of the bowls. Toss that in. Stunning. Just going to use a spatula because waste not, want not, and all that. And Lord knows butter is expensive enough. Now, what you mustn't do by any stretch of the imagination is cheat and use margarine because that really, really is going to be pretty hideous. And I'm just going to pop this into the fridge to set, really. And that will start with a lovely, lovely steak. Should you marinate a steak? Well, I don't always believe so. I think just a little shake or three of Worcester sauce. Some olive oil because basically you always oil your meat. You don't oil your pan. When do you salt it? When do you pepper it? Well, but actually just salt and pepper your meat before it goes in the pan. You want that coating to sort of come on the outside where you've got that full savoury flavour. You want to make sure your pan is really, really hot. I mean, you shouldn't really be able to hold your hand there for more than a couple of seconds. Oh, this is a remarkably delicious looking piece of meat. In it goes. Excellent. Now, 
You've got to fight the urge to sort of disturb it all the time because I really do feel to make a lovely crust on a steak is a very good thing. So in order to keep me occupied, I'm going to make a little sort of oil. I have two of the world's most flavorful ingredients right here. Anchovies with beef and capers with beef are both matches made in heaven. So I recommend you try this. But let's just check on the steak. Oh, of course, a bit of garlic never goes amiss either. If you've got a garlic crusher, then you know, use that. You don't have to do it all by hand. Another very important thing in your steak masterclass is to absolutely be sure that these, before you start cooking your steak, it's at room temperature. You don't want to put a cold steak into a hot pan. Now, I'm going to just check this steak. The size of this steak almost calls for it to be put in a very, very hot oven. But I can't imagine many of you at home doing that. So we're just going to now keep on turning, keep on turning, so we don't burn it entirely. To me, it feels absolutely perfect. What do you need to do? And this is vital. This is a large piece of muscle. All muscle needs to relax in order for two things to happen. Well, mostly for tenderness to occur. Why? Because all the juices will then seep back into the meat. If I cut this right now, all the juice would just leak out and be a complete disaster. You want it to sort of contract slightly, suck up the juices again, and that's where you're going to get the maximum flavour and tenderness. Right, back onto the oil. Okay, lemon. So start by using the lemon peel. Just gives a nice, you know, sort of balancing of flavour. There's the sort of the spice, which essentially comes from the garlic, the saltiness from the anchovies and the capers. And then we're going to have sort of lovely sour. It's going to come from the lemon. A little bit of salt, not too much, because you've got quite a lot of salt in the anchovies and in the capers. Lots of pepper for sure. And then, fine as you like, chop this parsley. Another popular cut in South Africa is a porterhouse steak, which is really just from the sort of thick end of the sirloin. Or, I suppose everybody's favourite, best of both worlds, a T-bone. So there you've got some sirloin and you've got some fillet. Lots of lovely South African olive oil. Now you do want quite a lot of oil because this is not a sauce, it's sort of an oil. This is definitely one of the most favourite sauces we have in our home. It covers a multitude of sins. Really does work with just about every dish in the universe. Okay, so we've got two sauces, a butter and an oil. And hopefully, a perfectly cooked steak. Let's see. All right, so here, our steak. So you'll see here, minimal pan juices. Essentially, it means the steak sort of sucked up all its juices and we haven't released too much. Mm -hmm. Onto your board. Oh, my mouth is literally watering. It looks absolutely perfect. What I must hasten to add, though, is rather undercook it, because you can always cook it some more, but you can't suddenly cook it a little bit less. Now, because I can, and I will, mm. unbelievable, I have to say, I'm a firm steak lover. Now that's what a perfect steak looks like, a good edge of fat and pink succulent meat. And whether it's a spicy butter or a flavour-packed oil you choose, both will be sublime, I promise.